Good evening. Welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is April 25th, and like usual, we're going to stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For our invocation, dear Lord, thank you for all who serve the Kettering community. Give us enthusiasm for our work and wisdom to make all the right decisions. May we remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Please guide this council so that we may continue to serve our citizens with integrity and purpose, always remembering to be worthy of the responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. Amen. Thanks so much, Mike Soproni, who is taking care of us from the back on the camera. We appreciate you. Mayor Lehner and Mr. Duke both have excused absences for this evening. Mr. Klepas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have reviewed the minutes from the April 11th council meeting and the council workshop, and I found them to be in order. I move for their approval. Second. Any issues? The roll, please. Mr. Klepas. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. We're so excited to have a presentation this evening. Shauna Lee Whalen, our Recreation Superintendent, is going to talk to us right now. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. The Kettering Ice Arena, managed by Tony Habert, is home to um, local Alter and Beaver Creek High School hockey teams, Dayton Stealth Youth Hockey, Dayton Fangs, women's hockey, and Huff and Puff and Wonder League adult hockey. And this season, we have rented 1,065 hours of ice time to these um, local and regional um, ice teams. So we are really happy about that. But one of the crown jewels of what we do at the ice arena is our lesson program, led by Penny Carpenter. So in this ice season alone, we have had 1,100 people take lessons at the Kettering Ice Arena. And I'm here tonight because for the first time since 2019, we are culminating our season with an ice show. So I would like to invite you, the council and our community to come to our ice show, which is called Circus, the greatest show on ice. And it is at 7 p.m. on Friday, May 5th and Saturday, May 6th. So this event will showcase um, the local hockey and figure skating groups, but also um, kids and adults who have built their skills in our lesson program. So there are 101 skaters that will be in the show, ranging from ages three up to 93. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the skating production for the 93 year old is really gonna be something to see. So we hope you guys come out for that. So um, since it's a circus, you'll see everything you'd expect to see, a fire number, elephants, tigers, clowns. It really is gonna be the greatest show on ice. So I just want to thank you for um, your time tonight. Thank you for supporting recreation in our community. And um, we hope to see you at the ice show, May 5th and 6th. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny, the book just came out and I was looking at it and I, and I told my daughter, I think my little four-year-old needs to learn to ice skate because I could see him with a hockey stick in his hand. So, scary. Thank you so much. There are no public hearings this evening. I will now turn to the part of this uh, program where we talk about public comment on legislation. Anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes and speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have any comments that are not on the uh, legislation on tonight's agenda, there'll be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Do we have anyone that wants to speak on legislation this evening? Yes, Ms. Bayless, come on up. I have a piece of legislation tucked into another two paragraphs. I'm Charlene Bayless, 2422 Patterson Boulevard, 45409. City Manager Greeson, welcome to Dayton, to Kettering. Um, Mayor, Vice Mayor, 
um, council and administration. George Bayless, lately deceased, came under Kettering uh, through Van Buren Township and his father's presence on the 1955 Incorporation Committee. George valued serving the city as a volunteer in several capacities, then by election to the Kettering Board of Education. The family thanks you all for your support and honoring of George these recent weeks. Then earlier this month, there was a two full pages Dayton Daily News large print notice regarding the further development of the Gentilly space, now Kettering Business Park. A, B, C, toward D. The plan is to assist and encourage housing development, grant tax exemptions from real property taxation, encourage economic stability generating jobs, for such community reinvestment work, a notice and survey are needed. I read every word. I know this is a huge undertaking and wish Kettering well. Thank you, Councilman Klepaz and Scott for the notice. And Council, in your mailboxes yesterday was information on a, a city of Dayton human rights a citizen initiative that Dayton would be the first Ohio human rights city. Human rights are those to which every human is entitled, the basics of food, shelter, and health care, plus that which allows humans to de develop their potential toward making a positive contribution to humankind, expression rather than oppression. The United Nations in 1948 codified the elements of human rights. Check them out in your mailbox material or online. And Georgia Cox of Dayton, here with me this evening, has worked on the initiative from its beginnings a couple of years ago and joins me in sharing the information and asking your awareness, alignment, and undergirding toward Dayton becoming the first Ohio human rights city. Thank you. And we are slipping out now and leaving you all to the 75 pages of attachments to this <laughs> evening's agenda. You are remarkable. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your comments that we're uh, not on the agenda and not part of legislation, but it's all good. It's all good. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Mr. Kulipaz, do you want to go ahead and kick off our meeting? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a... Is there, is there anyone else that needs to uh, address anything that's on legislation? Okay. It looks like none. Those are Leadership Academy. I knew they were, but we have to make sure. So go ahead, Mr. Kulipaz, please. You, you, I'm ready to go now? I'm ready to go. Okay, I, I was ready to okay. go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance this evening in uh, second reading to levy special assessments for the construction and repair of curbs, sidewalks, drive approaches, and related appurtenances for the four boulevard improvements, Smithville to Woodman Project, City Project Number 02-140F. And it's been requested by the Engineering Department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Bergstrasser. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as mentioned, this is an ordinance in second reading this evening, uh, which will levy uh, special assessments for the Four Boulevard uh, project, which went from Smithville to the um, to the North Corporation line. Um, it was a project was, was completed last year. All the final measurements have been made. Uh, we have completed the public notice process uh, for the assessments. We have we did not receive uh, any objections to the assessments. Uh, therefore, we're, we are recommending approval of this ordinance this evening. Thank you. Happy to answer questions. Questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a facade and site improvements grant agreement for the property located at 3027 Wilmington Pike. The estimated cost for this is up to $25,000. There is nothing budgeted for it. 
and it's requested by the Planning and Development Department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Uh, Your Honor, members of council, uh, thank you. Um, as you know, in order to implement the Wilmington Pike Plan and um, help redevelop uh, facades and uh, properties along Wilmington Pike, we created a facade and site improvement grant program. Um, this property at 3027 Wilmington Pike uh, is being uh, transformed from the former Pod Thai Siam restaurant to a new Jimmy John's restaurant where they are improving the facade as well as adding uh, landscaping uh, throughout the site. Um, it uh, conforms with our grant program's uh, requirements and we are recommending approval this evening. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution to amend resolution number 10791-22 um, estimated cost is $65,025. That is amount budgeted and is requested by the Public Service Department. I do move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor, members of council. Um, one of the projects you approved for this year was uh, improvements to our vehicle maintenance center. Uh, this internal project is important in order to um, essentially relocate um, some of the mechanic stations, create more dedicated uh, storage for tools and shop equipment and improve the functionality of what has been a dated vehicle maintenance center that's in need has been in need of, of uh, update. Uh, in the course of that project, it uh, became necessary to complete some additional masonry work on the floor uh, in, in, in order to con achieve some of the goals we've had with the project. Um, and there is a, is a cost increase uh, that we're asking for your approval. The original contract or project amount was $50,330. Uh, this additional amount for masonry work would be $14,695. Um, there are sufficient funds available in the 2023 20, uh, capital improvement program to cover the cost. However, um, it is more than 25% above the initial contract price and therefore requires city council approval. Um, we're recommending that you approve it this evening. Questions? Take the roll, please. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution adopting renewed and recalculated street light assessments, amended and or consolidated street lighting districts and certifying them to the county auditor for collection. This is being requested by the engineering department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Bergstresser. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is the second of a two-step process uh, for our street light assessments that we uh, conduct on an annual basis. Uh, this resolution tonight will uh, allow us to adopt uh, the streetlight assessments for 2023 and submit them to the county auditor uh, by September uh, for placement on property tax records. Uh, I will mention that there has been no increase to the uh, street lighting uh, rates uh, for residents this year. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Take the roll, please. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Mr. Scott? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to advertise for bids and to contract for the Golf Club Estates Phase 1 project, city project number 03-607B. The estimated cost is $1,260,000. Amount budgeted is $1,375,000. It's requested by the engineering department to move for approval. Second. Mr. Burke's Chesser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as mentioned, uh, this resolution will allow us to advertise for bids and contract for storm sewer replacements uh, in what we refer to as the Golf Club Estates neighborhood, uh, which is, uh, for point of reference, is the neighborhood immediately north um, of Kettering Hospital and west of Southern Boulevard. Uh, we were made aware of uh, some uh, fairly significant uh, storm sewer capacity issues uh, in this neighborhood uh, a number of years ago. 
uh, and therefore we have conducted uh, several uh, engineering studies uh, to look at the pipe capacity of the existing pipes in the neighborhood and we've determined that uh, there are uh, several large storm sewer pipes that are undersized uh, within, which in turn are constricting flow uh, upstream, uh, particularly in the southern part of the neighborhood uh, and onto Southern Boulevard uh, near Kettering Hospital. So this particular project will uh, essentially unclog the drain uh, in the south end of the neighborhood uh, and will improve uh, the storm sewer flow. Uh, we are planning a second phase of uh, storm sewer improvements in this neighborhood that would be primarily in the northern part of the neighborhood uh, along Belvoir. And that project is being programmed in our uh, five-year capital improvement program uh, in an upcoming year. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Take the roll, please. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a donation from American Legion Post 598 through the Kettering Police Foundation. The estimated cost is $7,500 and the amount budgeted is zero, requested by the police department. Move for, I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we certainly have a charitable community and we're grateful for the support that they uh, give us um, uh, year after year. Uh, in this case, uh, we're grateful that the American Legion Post 598 um, is uh, willing to give funds through the Kettering Police Foundation to support the purchase of five uh, AEDs, uh, automatic defibrillators, uh, for our police cruisers. Uh, I'd invite the chief to make any additional comments that he'd like, uh, and I think we recommend approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just for uh, clarification, the American Legion did reach out to us uh, offering a donation, so it was greatly appreciated on those parts. They asked us uh, any needs that we had. We told them that was one that we were looking at, so we greatly appreciate what they've done for us. Thank you. Fantastic. Any questions? Please take the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing acceptance of a bequest from the estate of Charles L. Simon in the amount of $5,000 and requested by Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Grayson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we're also grateful that we received uh, a donation from the estate of Charles I. Simon. Uh, the Charles Lathram Senior Center staff recently received a $5,000 bequest from this estate. Um, those funds were unspecified for use except for uh, the purposes of the senior center. Um, and uh, we're thankful uh, for his estate and um, we appreciate it and recommend approval. Any questions? Please take the roll. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. The estimated cost is $50,700, amount budgeted as zero. This is being requested by the Finance Department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, there are four uh, elements of this supplemental appropriation. Uh, three of them we recently, we just discussed. One is the appropriation that accompanies the grant, um, essentially appropriating the funds for uh, the facade grant um, agreement for the property owner of uh, 3027 Wilmington Pike, uh, the facade and site improvement program we discussed earlier up to $25,000. Um, appropriating uh, for use the funds $7,500 that will come from the Kettering uh, Police Foundation uh, through them from the American Legion Post that we discussed for the Police Department AEDs. Um, appropriating $5,000, that's the donation from the estate of Charles Simon that we just discussed for the Latham Senior Center. Additionally, there's a supplemental appropriation 
of $13,200 um, to increase funding for the Juneteenth celebration uh, from the current budget of $2,500. We're looking to uh, have that event at the phrase this year and we're excited about it. The estimated cost will help cover, uh, well include speaker fees, production, advertising, police and fire overtime and other personnel costs associated uh, with uh, what we'll, we believe will be a great uh, Juneteenth event. Thank you. Any issues, questions? Take the roll, please. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Ordinances? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, Your Honor, I have an emergency ordinance this evening to appropriate project parcels 45WD and 45T of the East David Road Improvements Project, City Project Number 02-116R, ODOT Project MOT-E, David Road Improvements, PID Number 110254, and to declare it an emergency, the estimated cost is $505 and that amount is available. It's requested by the engineering department to move for approval. Second. Mr. Burke Stresser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this evening we have a request for an emergency ordinance to appropriate um, two small, very, very small parcels of land uh, at the northeast corner of uh, the East David Road and Ackerman Boulevard. Uh, this is in relation to a project that is budgeted for next year. Uh, which will make improvements to East David Road uh, from Far Hills to Ackerman. It also includes the uh, replacement of uh, the traffic signal at David and Ackerman uh, from a span wire to a mast arm traffic signal. Uh, we, we were required to um, obtain right away from all four corners of that intersection um, it, for the traffic signal upgrade. Uh, three of the four corners we were successful in obtaining uh, the right of way we needed. Uh, the fourth corner, which is on the northeast corner, uh, our efforts to obtain uh, the necessary right of way have been unsuccessful, uh, and therefore we uh, need to uh, initiate appropriation proceedings. Uh, the reason we are requesting an emergency ordinance this evening is uh, to keep uh, the, the acquisition process and appropriation process on schedule uh, because we do have federal funds associated with this project, and we certainly do not want to lose out on uh, several hundred thousand dollars of uh, federal funding over a $505 property acquisition. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Vice Mayor Fisher? Yes. Your Honor, I have an ordinance to amend the text of various sections of the City of Kettering Zoning Code. This is being requested in by Planning and Development Department, and there is no cost. This is an ordinance in the first reading. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the, obviously, you're aware that the Planning Commission and the Planning Department uh, have recommended this, um, and they heard it at, at Planning Commission. You recently heard a presentation from uh, Ryan Holmesy on our planning staff. Uh, at a prior uh, council meeting. So this is uh, the ordinance that you've learned about and the Planning Commission recommended in first reading. Um, essentially, it amends uh, various sections of the City of Kettering Zoning Code uh, for several reasons. Um, one is to correct and clarify and omit areas of conflict that we've identified over time, um, to introduce uh, some flexibility and modernization of our code to help us foster redevelopment uh, the revisions also modify the permitted use table uh, and remove certain uses from the business park and business districts, areas where we are focused on jobs and economic development, uh, and, and it seeks to remove certain uses that take up a lot of land while providing minimal employment opportunities. Be glad to answer any questions. This is, an, uh, uh, however, it's an ordinance in first reading. Okay, thank you. Certificates and petitions, Ms. Kaczynski. Vice Mayor Fisher, we do not have any certifications or petitions this evening. How about a community update, Mr. Grayson? Yes, um, we can go to the first slide. We are excited about the upcoming uh, phrase season, and once again, I want to highlight that. Um, 
couple of just a few of the many concerts uh, we the kingdom on july 24th donny osmond which has gotten uh, a lot of attention um, and uh, a lot of social media um, excitement i should say about his july 26th at 8 p.m uh, concert uh, and uh, queen boulevard friday Ju july 28th are just a few of the highlights of course tickets can be purchased to all these events uh, at our ticket office, the Phrase Fanfare Store, located at Town & Country Shopping Center, uh, at online or by phone. Uh, we want to highlight the Art on the Playground, an interactive arts festival for kids that is going to be held at our Habitat Environmental Center on Saturday, uh, May 6th from 11 to 3. It's a free event, open to children of all ages, and you can park at Southdale Elementary. Just a quick Dorothy Lane uh, road work update. Um, we appreciate Montgomery County's continued work to uh, improve water lines in our community and on Dorothy Lane. Um, it's moving quickly to the next phase of water services uh, between Hathaway and Delane. Uh, to finish the first phase, they still need to perform final repairs to the roadway in the current travel lanes on Dorothy. Um, so expect that there will be a move of the current east-west bound traffic to the south side of the road so that they can repair the north side of the road. Um, we expect that to start uh, April 26th at 9 a.m. Um, we will not have a closure during this time, uh, but traffic will be impacted. Uh, importantly, it is, uh, it is important, I should say, uh, to recognize the good work of our staff. Um, and I want to offer my congratulations to the Finance Department. The GFOA, you need another government acronym, the Government Finance Officers Association of the U.S. and Canada presented a Distinguished Budget Presentation Award to the City of Kettering for its annual budget for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2023. And so there's a lot of work that goes into our budget and it is award winning. Uh, we want to join, we want everyone to join us for the community block party, the Kettering block party at Lincoln Park and Phrase Pavilion, May 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. And I believe that is it for my community update. Fantastic, thank you. I'd like to thank Mrs. Bayless for her comments that were um, addressed to us that were not necessarily on the agenda, but if there are others out there who would like to speak to us about other items not on the agenda, you have five minutes. You need to name your address and your name, please. Just come on down to the podium. Do these leadership academy... Doesn't, doesn't look like our leadership academy people want to talk to us today. <laughs> that why we're, why we're moving along so well here. <laughs> it's, this is their last possible chance. This, uh, this is true. Or they won't, or they won't true. graduate. True. There's a meeting May 9th. Oh, you do? <laughs> Place will be packed that night. That's right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kaleem Pounds, how about kicking off our city report? Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I, I, we have quite a few things going on since uh, the last meeting uh, on the 11th, and I know others will talk about several of those, but I just, I just want to mention a couple. Um, one was on, uh, on Sunday the 16th, um, the mayor and city manager and I were all attended the, um, over at Fairmont High School at the track, the um, annual, the third annual uh, Walk for Hope. Uh, the Hope Squad from Fairmont has been putting that event on. Uh, they're led by Jessica Stickle, who is their um, faculty advisor, you might say. And the event is an annual event that raises money to uh, support their efforts to raise awareness of suicide prevention and, and mental wellness. And it's made up, the Hope Squad is made up of folks from Fairmont, uh, Van Buren, and, uh, and are both Kettering uh, Middle Schools. So congratulations to them. Uh, we were able to walk uh, several laps <laughs> and before the rains came. So, but they, they had a nice turnout, so that, that, was, a, that was a good event. Also, I wanna uh, thank uh, those, uh, Lisa and, and, and Matt, that uh, attended the uh, Sister Cities annual meeting uh, last week. Uh, 
They, uh, that group has been meeting a long time. They've been, uh, uh, and they always appreciate the fact that we're able to come and show up and attend that event with them. Uh, last thing I want to mention, I was over at Kroger's, Stroop Road, shopping Kettering, last, it was probably, yeah, it was last week, and a lady walked up to me and said, hey, you're that shop local guy. I said, yeah, yeah, that's right. So that, that show we have people that are watching this watching. and they're listening because the word of advice on that is when you buy from a small local business, an actual person does a little happy dance. So shop catering, that's all I have. Yeah. That's awesome. Eager this is, happy dance. Yeah. This is all. Yeah, the happy dance. <laughs> Go ahead, this is all. Um, I just have one thing I wanted to mention this week. There is going to be a mobile full-service grocery store that's opening at the Trails of Oak Creek on Thursday. And from then on, it'll be there every second and fourth Thursday from 2 to 4 at 1785 Renee Drive. I'm so happy that this worked out and worked out quickly um, after the closure of Mark's grocery store, which actually did leave a small food desert. Um, the USDA defines a food desert as 100 households or more that are half a mile or more from a uh, grocery store with fresh foods and uh, without transportation to those um, grocery stores. So that is the situation where Mark's was and um, there's a part-time fix now and uh, for an, an area that really does need a grocery store. They also will do shuttle service to the grocery store if there's other places that need to get to the grocery and can't get there and it's handicap accessible and I'm just very grateful to Homeful, the organization that runs the grocery store and um, look forward to its success. Excellent. That's all for me. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be a bit longer than normal. Um, one of the main reasons I, I wanted to try to serve on council was my passion for business and economic development. And on Friday, April 14th, the city hosted an event called Breakfast with the Businesses. And it highlighted four businesses in Kettering. I think one of the ladies is in the audience tonight. I didn't know she was going to be here. Um, and they talked about their struggles and opening their business. They're all four of them were entrepreneurs. They all could not have thanked the city staff and the city support more. Okay, so hats off to our staff who assisted them. Uh, I want to call each one of them out by name. Uh, Kira Burns operates a, a cosmetology and, uh, for lack of a better term, a wig shop in town and country. And to try to quote her, she says, I love it here. Why would I ever leave? Okay, Kettering is her business place. Uh, Kathy Dudley, who for uh, about 35 years has owned Babyland Infant Care Center. Her and her husband run that operation. Um, Lasue, uh, who operates uh, DFL Nutrition, who I went to the next day and had a very good smoothie. Um, same thing, I believe you were in Trotwood, right? Came to Kettering, Kettering is home to her. I wonder if anybody's ever heard that statement before. Okay, so hats off to her for locating and catering and the help we were able to give them. The last one was uh, Anthony Head, Tony Head, who operates Chicken Heads. Uh, it's a ghost kitchen off of Dorothy Lane. I had kind of a lengthy discussion with him and uh, hats off to him because he employs some high school workers. And he told me that he will not keep a high school student employed at his organization if they can't maintain a minimum of a 3.0 grade point average. His rationale was, if they're not serious about school, how can they be serious about doing good work for me? And, and I think hats off to him for holding people to a standard. I think that's lacking in our society right now. So I was never as proud of business owners that day and the, the, the praise they gave our staff to assist them. So I want to thank staff and I want to thank those business owners. These are the people we need to hold up as examples in this city. So thank you so much for being here. And it, it, it's a great thing for Kettering to have these four people have their businesses in our city. Mr. Ball. 
I'm also going to be a little long, but I'm going to try and go fast. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate Jill for her work in bringing home full to the community. That is wonderful news, and I'm so grateful you did that. Thank you. I hope it's I hope it's successful. Thank you to Mr. Klee Paz for having us at the Sister Cities event. That was a great that was a great time. That was a nice group of people, and I'm excited for Spasna, since I can't go to Austria with y'all. Um, I also want to thank the American Legion for their donation tonight, as well as hosting uh, Jackie and I at their Euchre tournament, which was so much fun. I might have lost, because I'm not a good card player, but it was so much fun. That was a wonderful place, and I'm so grateful for their donation tonight. Um, on Earth Day, Saturday the 22nd, I had the pleasure of going to Delco Park with um, some of my Kiwanis buddies, and we did some trash pickup that morning. We only spent an hour, and we picked up so much trash. Um, it was, the, it looks great. The park looks great now. We did a good job. So thank you to Dawn Kirshner for her work in organizing that. And lastly, I want to remind you all with our Kettering Leadership Academy folks here. May 11th is their last class and it's their graduation night. And as Rick said, uh, they do have something big to announce. Their project is very impressive from what I hear. They won't even really tell me anything, so I don't know. And we have another fun announcement to make that night. So I'm excited and hope you all will be joining us there. Thank you. It has been a busy week, and I was on vacation half of it, but uh, it has definitely been busy. I'd say my highlight was um, actually the National DEA Drug Take Back. I popped in, checked on our, our finest um, taking back drugs, and I, I went in the last five minutes. I got there about, I don't know, a quarter to or whatever, and uh, they brought in 65 pounds of drugs. 65 pounds, a lot. Um, and, and just in, within a five minute window, four people came in and they were real grateful with their bags of, of drugs and threw them in there. So I, I really appreciate that we do that. And just to remind our citizens, our, there is a box that is in the police department always. So it doesn't have to be that day necessarily. So if you're doing your spring, spring cleaning, uh, you can drop those off at any time. So with that, being there's no further business to come before the city council, our next scheduled meeting will be on May the 9th, and this meeting's adjourned.